Madam President, uh, speaking with people during our visit here, it's already taken as a fact that the President will veto this new foreign agents law. Uh, only question is, when will it happen? So maybe you can answer it now. When will it happen? <laughs> Why should that answer? It's, there are 14 days to be used for vetoing the law, so the decision will be uh, according to the situation, especially on the, on the streets, when is it uh, the most opportune to, to veto. But the question of if does not exist. Do you, as a president, have some other means, not just uh, veto rights, to oppose this law? And no. this course of government? No. Uh, the veto is uh, the one normal instrument in the hands of, of a president. Here the problem is that uh, to uh, override the, the veto they need the exact same amount uh, of votes that they have had to adopt the law. So there is no question, especially that we by now uh, have a totally monolithic uh, majority that uh, votes on everything like one man and uh, on the decision of one man. So we are in a typical uh, Russian vertical of power. Uh, so I have no doubt about what will happen when I put the veto. But the veto is more uh, the representation uh, in a legal form of the will of the people. And it's important that it's uh, uh, put uh, down as a marker. Uh, the uh, power of the, of the president uh, in the end will not be the power of the president, it will be the power of the people that will express themselves in the elections, 26th of October, and that is the time when the people will be given the possibility to vote for those that promise to reject all the Russian laws. Because we don't have one Russian law, we have many Russian laws. Uh, can you please explain how is it possible that a country that has been on its European road for several years, several decades already, now has a government that slows it down and restricts it? It's not explainable, uh, it's not understandable, especially that this government, uh, but by now we understand that they are lying to the people, but they came uh, on this program to bring Georgia into the European Union. They were, uh, this party were the one that uh, inscribed, enshrined in the constitution, the European and Euro-Atlantic pass and uh, told us all, the different institutions, including the president, that you have to make all efforts in order to bring Georgia uh, into the Euro-Atlantic and European integration. And so the same people uh, are now uh, disregarding all the recommendations uh, of the European Union uh, and are taking laws, and again, not only this Russian law, are taking laws that are running against uh, everything that the European Union stands for, whether it's the electoral code, uh, whether it's this new law on offshore that makes Georgia a kind of uh, hybrid territory, and not very understandable, and uh, not only laws, but the methods uh, of governing, absolute lack of transparency. That's a word they're using every day, but nobody knows in the country who is governing really, who is taking decisions. The only thing we know is that everybody is just repeating one same message box. Uh, so that's also a Russian vertical and a Russian way of governing. And what we see on the streets uh, these days, the intimidation, the harshness of the repression, the use of uh, non-police forces. Police forces are behaving as normal democratic police force, but the non-police forces have no marking, they cannot be identified, and they're used officially by the state structures to repress people. So all of that makes this very Russian-oriented or Russian-like uh, government or authorities, uh, and there is no explanation whether it's pressure from Moscow, it's the determination of Moscow that at this medium uh, pass between the candidate status and the accession negotiations that had to start, mm -hmm. they want to cut it uh, short. Uh, and they put pressure on the authorities, or whether it's the inner decision of whoever is in power, uh, Mr. Ivanishvili, that has 
had a speech that frightened everyone on the 29th of April. Uh, what is the explanation, in fact, is not very important. It's what we see, it's the facts, and that's what has to be stopped. Are you concerned that the uh, current government is, is not only copying, as you said, the uh, Russian way of governing, but uh, that country may come under influence of uh, Russia even more? It's the same thing. If you are copying uh, their laws, their methods of government, uh, gradually you distance yourself, you lose the support of uh, those that are, have been our friends and supporters for 30 years, and uh, basically uh, you are deceiving your own population that uh, has been for 30 years more uh, steadily uh, for the European integration. There has been no dissenting voice on this issue. So you are just uh, really uh, losing your, your people uh, and losing the trust uh, and you're being unfaithful to what you have been elected for. At this situation, how can West, Western countries, Baltic countries, what kind of help can they provide? You just had a meeting with Baltic and Russian foreign ministers. Maybe you also touched this question. So what is it the Georgian people and also Georgian opposition, Georgian uh, civic society is expecting from Europe, Western countries, from European Union at the moment? Well, they cannot do the job before us uh, and we have to make the decision. What I'm telling that them is that they have to listen to the voice and to the choice of the people. Today on the streets, but of course that's not measurable, uh, but tomorrow, and it's tomorrow, 26th of October, we have elections, and in the elections the Georgian people will say whether they want Europe or they want something else. And it has to be a very clear choice. And that is a choice that the Europeans should look at and make their decision in view of what a democratic choice uh, will tell them. Yeah. We've been talking to protesters for several days now and we also asked this question about uh, elections and they are really worried that elections will not be held fair because George's dream has a lot of influence on election committee and that there can be some uh, mismanagement of voices. Do you believe do you have, uh, that the elections will be held uh, just and... Uh... No, they, they will want to rig the elections. I have no doubt about that. The way they are behaving, they continue to behave. Uh, but I'm uh, very uh, confident that if we have the mobilization that we're seeing now on the streets, uh, there are 500,000 new voters, new young voters, uh, that are the ones that are going to determine the election. We also have one million voters, as it was the case in Moldova, uh, in the diaspora that can make a very big difference. And the history of this country is that when the people and the mobilization is at its best, then nobody can rig the elections enough uh, to uh, override the uh, will of the people. So we have to be more convinced, I say, would say, of the strengths of the people uh, and of course we have to take all measures and uh, certainly our partners are much uh, awaited and welcome to come and observe and be present. Presence is very important, not only on the last day of elections, uh, because it gives the sense of support. We are a small country, you know what it means. And to see that we are not isolated, that we are uh, still uh, at the center of attention despite the major crisis uh, and the war in Ukraine, uh, but still that nobody forgets uh, the fight that is ongoing here. We have no war here, we are not Ukraine, and I want again to share my solidarity with Ukraine, uh, but we are uh, confronting a hybrid war with Russia, which is no less dangerous, not only for us, but also for the future of Europe. So we are fighting here on the forefront. Georgia has been fighting on the forefront for defense of Europe for many centuries. Um, and this is a peaceful fight, which will end in the elections, and we need all support possible. 
How do you see how will situation develop until the elections? What will happen on the streets, uh, on political scene? Uh, I mean, is it possible that there is some scenario like a revolution, like Maidan uh, in Ukraine, or maybe the protests will be suppressed like we saw in Belarus? What's your prognosis? What I think it will be... I don't like prognosis because I'm not in that job. <laughs> Uh, but if you ask me my, my conviction and what I will try to do as a president uh, who at this stage has quite some trust in the, in the population, I will try to lead them uh, through this very difficult period to peaceful elections. That's our best chance. Uh, I don't think that the chance of Georgia would be to repeat either Maidan. We've had that type of uh, already in the past. So. At this stage, and given the geopolitical environment, our best chance uh, is to prepare, seriously prepare, for elections that are going to be a referendum. So it's a different kind of election. We'll vote for Europe or we'll give away our future. So it's a very important. We have almost, what, five months exactly to prepare for that. There is work for everyone. Uh, speaking of work for everyone, uh, we had uh, also some experts saying that George's dream is not strong, it's opposition that is weak and divided. Is it possible that opposition political powers will consolidate in some kind of bloc to oppose, to be more stronger for the next election? Do you see some signs it's, of consolidation? It's up to them, but I think that if there is consolidation of the political forces, and that's not only the traditional parties, but all political forces, including those forces that we've seen at work these days. Uh, if there is consolidation of those around the uh, idea of Europe and the action plan for Europe that I'll be presenting, then parties can go individually even in the elections, but who will win will be this uh, consolidated action plan against uh, one party represented by the uh, GD. So then it's a question of really electoral calculus, which they probably will make, and it's up to them. But I will make sure that there is consolidation on the main idea among everyone. I think our time is coming to an end, but maybe if we have time for one more question, it's not actually a question, but uh, if you have something to say to people of Latvia, to organizations in Latvia, maybe you can say not to me, but to Kamer, if you have something to address to Latvian people. Uh, my message would be that thank you, uh, because we have been uh, over these uh, last 30 years in the same struggle, in the same fight, uh, and uh, you all the Baltic countries and Poland also uh, have been the countries to which we look at for support and this support has been there and I'm convinced that it will be there again at this very important turning point for Georgia. Thank you very much. Good luck.